Right, hello and welcome to the Geek Lab and this time to my computer uh, because I've had a few requests for a tutorial on how to use a program called Repetier uh, with the V3 printer because it seems that the V3 software itself, although it will do the basics, uh, it's not very in-depth, doesn't give you much options. So people are looking for better ways of doing it and one of the answers to that is Repetier, which uh, I use. So what I'm going to do is show you th through the basics of setting up using this software, uh, how to place stuff on and some settings and how to print. Now this will not get you out to using the V3 software completely, you do need to use that to configure your bed height but once that's done on your computer you only need to use, run that once, it will save it and uh, you can then use this software completely. Obviously if you reset your computer again, as in do a rebuild, you're going to have to do that configuration again. But beyond that you can stay using this software. So first thing I'm going to show you is the printer settings, so if you go to config Put in printer settings. Uh, the connection here. Now it's going to have to be a serial connection because that's what it is. Port on mine it's COM4. That may be different on yours depending on what uh, port yours is plugged into. Now the board rate should be set at 115,200. Transfer protocol can be set to auto detect. Uh, reset on the emergency is set at send emergency command and a reconnect. Receive cast size is 63 and the communication timeout is 40 seconds. If you do that, that should set you up nicely and get everything going. These are the printer settings like travel feed rate, Z axis feed rate I got. Uh, these are default, but this one if you change that to a thousand, uh, or else <laughs> your printer bed is going to, once it's heated, your printer bed will rise very slowly and your, your printer will make a hell of a noise in the process. Uh, so if you set that to a thousand, it should now travel up at the same speed as the V3 software. We leave everything else as it comes default. Same with the extruder, just check it, make sure it is the same. Uh, number of extruders 1, maximum temperature speed 280, maximum bed temperature 120. Uh, they came as default, but just check and make sure they are, because that seems to work well. Now, uh, the bed is, I do believe, 140 by 140. Now, when I did this initially, it started going off the edge of the bed. So what I've done is set the X minimum to 10 and the Y minimum to 10. X maximum to 135 and the Y maximum to 135. That keeps it a centimeter away from the edges, stops it going over the edge. Seems to work very nicely for mine. So your print area width will have to be 140, uh, print area depth 140, and the height 135, which is the uh, what you'll see in the specs for the printer. Sp uh, scripts in advance you do not need to deal with. So click apply. Okay, you can then, if you were using, if you were connected to the printer, which I'm not, because I'm over the other side of the room, uh, you could then pin, uh, press connect. Now, to move your model in, there's two ways. You can either go file, load, and all this, or you can just drag it in like that. It will then slowly upload it, process it, and Eventually, doo -doo 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 -doo, it appears. Now, obviously, this one's too big because this is the default size. So, I'm, what you can do, uh, you've got several options here. That's to export it. I've never used that button. You can use that to add objects. Obviously, you can add multiple objects. Uh, you can copy the object using that one. If you press that one, if it's off center or you've got multiple objects, it will auto position them for you. Uh, that one will center the object, this one will scale the object. Uh, so this one is too big, so if I go uh, 0 0.75, you can see it is in. Now, one problem I did find with this, this I used this originally, uh, scale to maximum, and it goes right to the edges. But I found 
that uh, the models are actually slightly too big. So I always leave a little bit of space at the top. So with this model, obviously it varies, uh, 0.75, a little bit of space, and it printed fine. Uh, you can rotate the object on the bed. Now I found that by default it comes out at 45 degrees. It faces left, the model will face left on some of them. So it's difficult to test actually, uh, but you might want to rotate it. If you need to rotate it, you can just use that. Uh, view cross section. Not use that actually. Ah, cool. Okay. Playing live. So you can run through it. That's quite good actually. Before you slice it. Let's have an inclination, change inclination. Yep, and go on. And as you move. That don't appear to be doing anything. Unless you have to have some inclination. Ah, well maybe you have to have inclination. And then Azimuth will change that around. Yeah, there you go. So there you go, I'm learning something myself. And you can mirror that object. Let's get rid of that. Doink. There you go. Change it exactly around. Okay, uh, once you're happy with your position and all this, you can use these controls here. This is the rotate, which does all that. That one is move viewpoint, so it moves up and move through, yeah, your viewpoint up and down. This one will actually allow you to grab and position the item. So if I show you there, there you go. As it goes to green or white, whatever that is, that means it's out of position on the bed. So if you press center object, it will bring it back. Isn't that good? Uh, using that, you can zoom in and out. You can use your wheel or just move your mouse. Uh, zoom objects to fit. Puts back to default view. Isometric view. Do do do. Front view. Ah, there you go. So learning something here. If you click the view, front view, you'll find out whether it's going to come out sideways. You can then rotate it. Isn't that good. Top view. So isometric view. And there you go. So once you have it all set up nicely, you can go to the slicer. This is where things get interesting. You've got two engines to choose from. There's the Cura engine and the slicer engine. I do not have any preference. What I find is that each of them, it depends on your supports. Each of them will do supports differently. So you can run it on one engine, uh, look at the supports. If they're not good enough, you can try the other one. Slicer, the disadvantage with Slicer is it takes a hell of a lot longer to do the slicing itself. But, we'll have a look at, we'll have a look at Slicer. Okay, so if you go into Slicer, you've got some simple settings here, but if you go to Configuration, it does take a while to appear a Slicer. With Cura, it appears instantly. Slicer takes a while, for some strange reason. I don't know why. Don't ask me. I am still waiting for it to appear. Right, okay. Uh, it's taking a few moments to appear, so don't th think you're screwed if it doesn't appear on yours. Right, you've got simple mode. Default. I've never used any other mode than simple mode. I think you can record, uh, you can save different ones. So you've got layers and perimeters, uh, your layer heights set to 0.175, whatever your filament is, it should be 0.175. Uh, perimeters, I do not know what perimeters are. This option sounds like... Do, 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 do. Hmm. Okay, uh, solid layers, top and bottom. This is obviously the amount of layers that are solid at the top and bottom of your model. Extra perimeters if needed. Have that selected because that will override that if that's not enough. Uh, avoid crossing perimeters, detect thin walls, detect bridging parameters, uh, infill. This changes depending on your model and what you want. So you can go from 10% all the way up. I usually use around 10% and honeycomb is uh, quite suitable. Rectilinear is like a cross pattern that's suitable for the top and bottom. Uh, leave the rest default. I have never had to change this. Skirt and brim, you can have loops, 
which go around the object. Uh, this helps to get your nozzle extruding properly before it starts. Uh, distance from object, you can have that any distance you want, just in case it's going to blob. Uh, skirt height, you can have the, the skirt if you want. Uh, I don't know, yeah, several layers of height of skirt. I just have that one because it's mainly just for getting the uh, the nozzle printing minimum extrusion length and you can have a brim if you want. This is a layer that goes around the item. It's used to help make it easier to remove it from the bed, bed. and also it stops curling, well it helps to prevent curling at the edges of the model. Support material, this is where you're going to have to play quite a bit. Uh, I've set these to default, uh, zero, which sets them all to default. So overhang threshold, anything over 45, I think it is by default, will uh, get support. Uh, and hence, and for support for the first several layers, uh, you can have a raft if you want. I don't use a raft. Uh, heated bed seems to do well, so I've got that to zero, and kept all these to zero. Now what I've found is that when you do the slicing, uh, you may get supports that are very thick, uh, supports you can't get into, things like that. Then you can play with these, just go through them and play with them until you get a model where the support is much thinner and suitable. Speed. I've left these at default, uh, perimeter 60%, infill, I changed that to the same as the external because it was printing too fast and the info was in a mess. Um, Bridge is 100% travel. I've left all this, all this default, and it seems to work well. Multiple extruders doesn't uh, count for us. Advanced left all this default. Filament settings make sure it's 1.75. Extrusion multiplier. We're going to talk more about them at a later date because. Uh, my printer does need a bit of configuration, but I've still to do that, so I may cover that at a later date. And these are the temperatures for the nozzle 210. What I do is put it to 210, and when I'm printing with PLA, is put a fan on it, so it will bring it down to about 180, 186 when the fan's running. Just a desktop fan right at the edge of the printer. And the bed uh, at 55. Cooling, we don't have a fan connected, so that's not relevant and printer settings this is just kept to default so once you've got all them nice you can hit that it will slice it take ages and once it's sliced you'll get an option to come up uh, to save it and uh, to print it things like that you then get a print preview there it is you'll get save to file save thing ding 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 and the option to print uh, when you've actually done slicing, you can actually look through the file with these layers and it will show you each layer. So you can see how your supports are connected, how thick they are, and just go back and change it if you want. You will then get print. Once you press print, it will go to this screen. It's not connected at the moment, but you'll see the bed temperature should start to raise first. That will then beep. The bed will then raise. The extruder will then come up, come to the temperature, and once the extruder started to, uh, it's got reached temperature, it will start to print. Obviously, once the extruder is getting close to its temperature, you'll start to see bits of filament. Uh, just bits of filament coming out, just before it gets to temperature, use something to remove that filament. Uh, but once it's beeping, don't touch it. It will then go through everything. A nice thing about this is if your computer's not up to scratch with the model, sometimes they struggle. Uh, as it prints, you can see it developing on here too, but if your computer's uh, not up to it or the file's too big, it will automatically stop this from showing to help prevent the uh, printer from slowing down. So that's the basics. Uh, we may do more complex tutorials at a later date as I learn more myself, but Hope that's uh, been helpful. Please let me know if it has. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments and see if we can tackle them. So, I hope that's uh, suited what people were after. Which is my to say. Thank you very much. And uh, if you're not subscribed, then please subscribe 
for future tutorials on the 3D printing, especially with the V3. So, thank you very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>